Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on creating and interpreting box plots using SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, when analyzing variables, we want to get an idea of how the values in a variable are distributed and identify any outliers that may be in that variable. And box plots can help us to do that. So let's start by taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS. I have an ID variable. I have an independent variable named program that has three levels, individual counseling, group counseling, and treatment as usual. And there's 15 participants in each level, so a total of 45 records. And then I have three dependent variables, severity, functioning, and motivation. There are a few different ways to generate box plots in SPSS. I'm going to start by showing you the one that's Analyze, then Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. So this is the one that you would generate using the Explore feature. You can see this is what Explore looks like by default, and we use this function for many purposes. In this case, I'm going to be looking at Program as a factor, and motivation as a dependent variable. And under statistics, I'm going to leave descriptives checked off. I'm also going to check off outliers and percentiles. And under plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf. We won't need that. And then there are options. I'm going to make no changes. So we'll click OK. And we can see we have Motivation broken down by each level of the independent variable for these descriptives. And down here on the percentiles table, you can see that we have weighted average here for, well, many percentiles, including the 25th and 75th, which are of particular interest to us. But rather than look at the weighted average, of more interest is the value for Tukey's hinges. So the uh, quartile 1, 25th percentile, and quartile 3, 75th percentile, we're interested in these values here. Now this is, again, broken down by all the levels of the independent variable. So when we look at the box plots, we have three separate levels of the independent variable here, individual, group, and treatment as usual. And we can see that there are two outliers for treatment as usual, record 44 and record 45. So we can get an idea what the values are by looking at the y-axis here, but it's not always easy to tell exactly what the value is. If we go to the data view, and we keep in mind we're looking for 44 and 45, we know they're going to be toward the end, or at the end, in the case of 45. And you can see it's uh, 40 for, for record 44 and 36 for record 45. So to demonstrate how SPSS calculates what is an outlier and what is not, I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore, and I'm going to remove the factor. I'm just going to look at motivation, uh, the dependent variable motivation, without dividing it out by each level of the independent variable. And make no other changes. Keep statistics how I had it, plots same way, and options. And click OK. And here we have the descriptives for motivation. And we can see under two key hinges, the quartile one value is 75, and the quartile three value is 87. So the interquartile range is 12. And we want to keep in mind, specifically for this example, this value of 75 as the value for quartile 1. So as I move down to the box plot for motivation, I want to explain the different elements here of the box plot. So this line in the middle, this is the median value. The rectangle extends from, at the bottom, quartile 1 which is 75, to the top, which is quartile 3, 
which is 87. And then you have the whiskers. So this is the vertical line above the rectangle and below, and then this horizontal line that has represents these cutoffs here. And these, these cutoffs are the minimum, this would be the minimum down here, and the maximum values excluding outliers. And then as you can see, in this case, uh, all the outliers are toward the bottom of the box plot. And we have record 37, and that's a circle, record 44, which is a circle, and then record 45, which is a star. So as you can see, SPSS divides outliers into two categories on a box plot, the circle and the star. And you could think of the ones that are represented by the circle as being mild outliers, and the ones represented by the star as extreme outliers. And the calculation to determine if an outlier is mild or extreme is made based on the interquartile range, which I move up here, you remember is in this case 87 minus 75, which is 12. So to determine the mild outliers, it's 1.5 multiplied by the interquartile range. So that would be 18. And we subtract that value from the value of quartile 1, which is 75. So in this case, we know any value that's below 57 will be considered, at the least, a mild outlier. So if we look here at record 37, the data set, we could see it's 56. That's one below 57. It qualifies as a mild outlier. Now for an outlier to qualify as an extreme outlier, you would take the interquartile range and multiply it by three, and in this case, subtract it from quartile one. So 12 times three is 36. 75 minus 36 is 39. So any value below 39 would be an extreme outlier. So if we look at these two items, 44 and 45, we can see that 40 was a mild outlier and 36 was an extreme outlier. Now again, all the outliers I have here are toward the bottom of the box plot. If you're calculating outliers up above in the uh, upper part of the box plot, if you had the outliers there, it would be the same logic except applied based on quartile 3 and adding. So you would take the interquartile range, multiply it by 1.5, get the 18, add that to 87, which would be 105. So 105 would be your cutoff for a mild outlier. And for extreme outliers, you would take 12, multiply it by 3, which is 36 and add 36 to 87, which is 123. So any value above 123 would be an extreme outlier. I mentioned earlier that there's a few different ways to generate box plots. I showed you how to do it using the explore function. You can also go into graphs, legacy dialogues, and box plot. And you can see you have summaries for groups of cases or summaries of separate variables. Let me do separate variables and select simple, define, in this case motivation, and the options I'll leave the same and click OK. And you can see it generates the same box plot. You can also generate this box plot from graphs chart builder. This is what the chart builder looks like by default. We go to box plot and if we just want to look at motivation we would drag in the 1D box plot, drag that into the chart preview, and we're just going to populate here the value motivation and click OK. And again, we have the same box plot here. From Chart Builder, if you wanted to generate something 
like what we had for explore with the uh, independent variable program considered you can generate the same box plot here uh, I'll just reset this I'm going to drag in the simple box plot and for the x-axis I'm going to put in program and the y-axis motivation and click OK and we have the same box plots that we had when we ran this function through explore so we have motivation broken into the three levels of the independent variable I hope you found this video on creating and interpreting box plots using SPSS to be helpful as always if you have any questions or concerns feel free to contact me I'll be happy to assist you